so we are both uh, grad school graduates. Yes. You have your PhD. Correct. I have my DNP. Uh, so a lot of people say that grad school is more of like a jog, not a sprint. It's all about uh, being able to withstand oh, for you sure. know, the time. You for know, sure. in, a, in a bachelor's program, stuff like that, it's like you're trying to get it done. But grad school is just kind of a different pace. Kind of explain the difference between the bachelor's program and then grad school, kind of what the differences are there. Ah, okay. So definitely bachelor's program, you were just trying to get a taste of all the flavors of ice cream. Right. And uh, by, uh, by the end of that, you should know, I like my cookies and cream ice cream with a little bit of sprinkles on top, i.e. I loved chemistry. So like I knew mm. that chemistry was where I was going to go. Uh, but then you get to the end of end of this and you either are like, I need to figure out how to transition to the workforce with just a bachelor's in chemistry, which is very it's doable, but you tend to only get like technician jobs. Mm -hmm. So not not fantastic paying jobs, if you will. That's a, you don't go into chemistry with this. You have to have the love for science, mm -hmm. like definitely have to have the love for science, love for discovering, love for research. Because essentially, at that point, you either need to say, I'm going to go do work for someone else that has a PhD, or I'm going to figure out a way to get a PhD and have people work for me. Mm. And that's kind of the way that that was introduced to me when I went on my interview at Auburn after I had uh, applied, got my acceptance letter. I had to go meet with the department staff and stuff. And he looked at me and I had originally actually um, applied for my master's and I got accepted for my master's. And he sat me down. He goes, he goes, so can we in any way make you change your path to want to do a PhD? And I was like, well, explain to me what the difference is. I need to understand why I would want to add years here and what the benefit is for it. And he goes, do you want to work for somebody or do you want people working for you? Mm. He goes, do you want to be leading the research or do you want to be doing someone else's research? And I was like, well, of course I want to be doing the research. I want to be the head of the ship. I, I want to be able to, you know, discover that next big thing or, or make this next ingenious discovery. Or at this time, I think it was, uh, his name, Sir Fraser Stoddard had just won the Nobel prize in chemistry for making little like microscopic machines. Oh, so wow. like, I mean, it's, it's really cool stuff. If you, if you, if you ever get a chance, go look at like the last four or five years of, of, uh, Nobel prize in chemistry. They're, mm. they're, truly remarkable discoveries mm. uh but it's like okay that's at the forefront of your brain you're like well maybe one day i can do that you know right. and of course like always always keep that dream in the back of your head but like it's just i, I was almost a little infatuated with that and then i was like i think i can do that mm -hmm. I, I, but once again i'm early in my career like really i'm considered a, an early career scientist sure. so oh, like yeah. i literally my two years out of a phd so i'm a baby but, i think that sometimes like Man, I've been through so much, but we're we're thirty one, dude. We got, I know we, we, we got a lot. Out. When I talk to my dad, is seventy. <clears throat> he's like, "You're just starting out." I'm like, "I don't feel like I'm just starting out," but apparently we are. Oh yeah. Uh, so in the nursing spectrum, uh, bachelor's is very rigorous to me. Uh, it's kind of a weeding out process. You talked about that earlier in mm -hmm. bachelor's. They early on in the program, they're getting out the people that don't really want to be there. Oh yeah. Uh, but it is definitely tough. Graduate school for me was easier. I don't know if oh, see, for sure. I, I practice for sure. is three, I practiced three or four years after graduating. Mm -hmm. Then I went back a lot of people in nursing that you can go directly into a graduate program. As soon as you graduate a bachelor's program, which I think is weird i think you need to practice as a nurse that's my opinion i mean that is a big part of it if yeah. you can't get the people part of it down there's not much point exactly in how can you be a graduate a master <laughs> of nursing if you're not good with you people. never you've never nurse you've exactly. been a nurse how is exactly. that even possible but uh practice for three or four years and then graduate school to me was not that tough uh just more of just a jog man instead of a sprint just for sure for sure being consistent you got to get your work done on time you got to go to clinical you got to do all this stuff and um, but yeah, PhD versus DMP. So you have your PhD, Correct. which is more prac or more doctorate of philosophy. There you go. More yeah. research base for sure. So a PhD in nursing is kind of different from a DNP, which is a doctor of nursing practice, <laughs> which is what I have. A DNP is kind of more practice based. Gotcha. So it's more, but you can still do stuff leadership wise. It's kind of like what you said, masters versus doctorate. Yeah. You want to work for somebody you want to be. So the doctorate can kind of get you in avenues of leadership 
uh, CEO potentially in the future, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Just gives you more of that research base so you can do a lot more things. And so that's kind of the difference in the nursing thing. Yeah, for sure. And I guess uh, also, actually, I have a question for you about that. So uh, what are your thoughts on burnout in grad school? Because that that was that was a trigger word for for a that lot of a, stuff. That was a phenomenon. I wish I knew what it was, but it was like the first semester of grad school. It's kind of like imposter syndrome almost. Oh gosh, like you shouldn't be there. Oh yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Like you shouldn't be there. Like um, I don't I don't know specifically what it was. I wish I could remember it, but um, yeah. I mean, I definitely think it's it's valid for sure. Oh, imposter syndrome is a huge thing. I I still have moments of of imposter syndrome, and I have my PhD. It's like. Did I, did I really do all that? Did right. I actually, like, am I a qualified scientist? Do I, on paper, look exactly the same as someone else that, that did all the same stuff that I did? Sure. And it's just, you. Uh, I think there's part of it that you always kind of second guess yourself. I mm-hmm. mean, that's something that you mentally have to exercise not to do, but it 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 it's almost a rite of passage for grad school. It's, well, bringing faith into this a little bit, we're both Christians, we'll get yes, into that in a second, yes. but I think God ordained your path. Um, For sure. You know, many times in my life I had plans. I had things I wanted to do, avenues I wanted to take, and uh, that didn't work out. And and I'm glad that it didn't. Looking back, I'm like, you know, God always works it out for your good. You know, those are believers, Christians, and stuff like that. If you're with him, uh, you may not understand. You know, and sometimes when I get down, I'm like, I'm not even qualified to do this. God has put you there, you know, no matter where you're at. You know, God has ordained your path. He's put you on this place for a reason. And you need to be uh, accepting of that and really try to believe that. But it is hard. Oh, yeah. you know, those thoughts come in sometimes for sure. Faith is not an easy thing. Faith, it, faith, kind of coming full circle to your to your workout workout stuff here. Faith is a muscle that needs to be trained very regularly. That's very true. That's very true. That's a <laughs> so, good point. And I mean, it's I I I agree with that one one hundred percent. I the one way that I was able to combat this. This imposter syndrome was the fact that I knew that God had put me there for a reason. He had opened doors that shouldn't shouldn't have happened. Right. Like the way that I got to Auburn is nothing short of a miracle. Like right. absolutely, God had His hand in every every facet of every step of that process. Because like I, I was in the span of getting accepted with two weeks before the or two to three weeks before the semester started, wow. I was able to find a place to live, move down there. And get everything in order for me to be able to to just kind of walk right in and be a grad student. The normal would take months probably to do oh, all that. There were people that had, that had their confirmation to go there seven, eight months in advance before wow. they had graduated. And I was just like, uh, unfortunately, my approach was a little bit odd, but I was just kind of like, I don't want to adult yet. What's something else I can kind of do? Yeah. Grad school. Hey, more schooling. It's I know how to school. I've go. done schooling for a long time. Can't enough. take it away from you. That's the thing about education. It's not for everybody, uh, but they can't take it away from you. Nobody can. That's sure. the beautiful thing about education. Let me ask you this. I asked this on a previous podcast. Uh, school, college right out of high school. A lot of people take breaks. Some people go straight through. I went straight through. I didn't take any breaks. I, I didn't did take too. any summer classes. Um, but for people that don't know what they're going to do, you know, that they're in life, they get a job, they start making money, they start even advancing. I had a guy that is advancing in his job, doing really well. What is your opinion on taking college classes? Could that hold you back? Do you think it could be a waste of time? What's your opinion on that? I once again, it's situational. I yeah. think I think definitely if if you're looking like. There is nothing wrong with trade. You can make lots of money doing, uh, what was it? What was the one that I saw? Underwater welding. Like yeah. well, a welder, you can make a lot of money and have a very successful career. Mm-hmm. Now, granted, it's like if you're doing underwater Hard welding, work. you're having to, that that's a lot of stress that I wouldn't want to deal with. Yeah. But if you want the paycheck for it, I can promise you it's going to be a very hefty paycheck. Mm-hmm. But it's, it depends on the situation, you know, if you need to go, if you're wanting to just get out and work and you're burnt out from school, find something that you love to do. Find something that can support a family. Find something because at the end, especially speaking as as a man, that's kind of the, the thing that you want to be able to do is always provide for your family because right. like it's it's that part it's it's a natural drive i think in every man mm. is to be be the provider and i think that's part of the way that that god set a family up thank you guys for watching the podcast the better man with dr jared nelson don't forget to hit the like button subscribe if you're new 
and hit that notification bell so you get to see every single one of the videos I post send directly to you. Until the next one, guys. Peace. Yeah,